Welcome to Grant's Rock Warehouse and yet another interview from the 80s cruise. This one happened on March 8th of 2023 with Lou Graham from Foreigner. Mark Goodman does the uh, interview. Here you go. Enjoy. So um, please welcome Lou Graham. Ooh. Yeah. Lou Graham. I need a chair a little lower to the ground, I think. <laughs> All right. Uh, yes. That's right. I don't know what you scream. Is that great? Farewell tour, they're leaving. I'm not sure what yay to that means. But, so, go ahead. We'll I think, I, I, think I know what it means. And, and I, I, think it's, I think it's a good thing, you know? At, at this point of uh, the foreigner career, epic career. I, th I think it's run its course yep. and, and uh, it's been good years for, for all involved, especially the, uh, the band that, that uh, was, was Foreigner's Inception. And, and uh, there were changes of personnel after that while I was still in it and, and that was a, a damn good band too. Mm -hmm. um, and, and mixed choice to keep it going after there were no original members other than himself. Uh, uh, that's that's his that's his option, you know. Uh, I can't quite get one, you know. I, I know his his health is is has had its ups and downs, and I don't understand how they could be touring with no original members, still calling it themselves foreigner, and and going on for years. Yeah. Like that, you know. Uh, well, no, I guess the, it's the, not my business, and maybe it is a business decision for them, but, but it just doesn't feel right. Well, I, as I understand it, I, um, I, I, have, I saw Nick four or so years ago, and I, I know that he is having some health issues, and it, it seemed for, for quite a while, and I've seen that version of, you know, Barn with only Nick in it, yes. uh, and that's, it's been that for quite a while, but he was showing up. Now that he, he is infirm, then it's a little more difficult. I mean, honestly, for, for, for years he's been showing up for half the show, or he right. had come in the last four or five songs of, of the set, and, and uh, apparently lately it's, he's come, come in for the last song, and, and the encore, and that was it. And, and then I know there's been many, many shows lately where, where he's not there at all. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I mean, it's, I'm sad for the fans, but I'm sadder for Nick yes. that he's going through that. Yes, me too. Having said all of that, um, you know, farewell tours, we're, we're, they're like, we're getting used to them already. Uh, how many times has Kiss done a farewell tour? I'm not sure. Uh, Elton John's farewell tour has gone on for like, I think, half a century. But, but, but at least with Kiss and Elton John, when they do a farewell tour, you're seeing the band. Oh, John, yes. Yes. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but Journey, for example, in the midst of their 50th slash, not their farewell tour, but a 50th anniversary tour, and Lord knows what's going to happen with those guys next. Right. But um, yeah, Greg Raleigh. They've, they've still got the mainstay players. So. Well, they do. That's true. That is the difference between Foreigner and, uh, and, and Journey. Uh, but again, you know, billing. You know, in in the role of Kelly Hansen, in that band, you know, they have a different lead vocalist that does great also. But Greg Raleigh, original founding member, has showed up on at least one date on this tour so far. Okay. The obvious question for any of us who may want to go to the farewell foreigner tour is: Has anyone reached out to you or? Would you be interested in showing up at a one one night? No. You've been back. You've been no back and forth in the band. There's a, there's a vote for L.A. <laughs> you know, I, I'm 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 not sure. I'm I'm so at peace with where it is now and 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 how it's how it's ended and and we've had our our uh, I don't know it was the 40, 40th reunion of. 
one of the elms is the first elm or a four or four or a double vision. We, we've had those and we've played some some shows with the new band and the old band. Those have been a lot of fun. But but just to, just to, for me to come in and sit in with with a band that 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 emotionally doesn't mean that much to me and just and just play just play for the for the for the memories of it. You know. If if if, if uh, there were other members of the original band uh, on stage, I, I might be inclined to seriously think about it. But but to come and guest with the new foreigner that doesn't uh, doesn't appeal to me. Understood. I it, uh, I know that you have done that though. You have been on stage with Kelly Hansen. Yes, when when they had the reunion tours, I I I have not gone to any of their shows and, and guested myself on stage with with the new band, just me. Yeah, I, I haven't done that. It's, it's always been with 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 uh, members of the original band with me. Um, you and Mick in uh, I think 2013 or 14 uh, were inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame. Now, yes, as I said, the soundtrack to our lives. Um, and I've spoken to a, a lot of artists, and that particular induction is really, really important. How did that hit you when you found out? Uh, I thought it was it was monumental, and and uh, just just the honor of being amongst those uh, uh, renowned songwriters what was uh, thrilling to me uh, you know for, for any any of the the um, the uh, um, diff different places you can be honored in the music business uh, I think that one is a huge one and I was, I was so thrilled to be a part of that yeah and it was great to, to do it with Mick too did you, I, I think up to that point, I don't think you guys were in, in touch. Did you speak around that time? And have you spoken we, since? What was it, 2013 you said? Yeah, yeah I hadn't spoken to him since, since I left the band in 2002. So that was 11 years of no contact. And how gracious of you to call Mick. About about the uh, about about that induction. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. uh, 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 it it was told to me, and and I was asked to call Mick and and let him know about it, and uh, we, we were both thrilled, and and we kind of uh, rekindled our friendship a little bit, and uh, we we had a lot of fun that night. It was really terrific, uh, and. Um, I, I guess I was under the wrong assumption that that somehow not, not because of that, but but using that as something to to um, mend the past a little bit that that we we would um, at least stay in touch as friends. But 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 honestly, since that night, I haven't heard from him. <coughs> I know he's going through a lot of health issues, and, and uh, I'm sure his emotional uh, um, condition is, is up and down. He's had to come to terms with, with a lot of things that mm -hmm. I, I would not want to come to terms with. And, and uh, I talked to Phil Carson, the owner's manager, and... Um, I, I asked Phil, you know, we talk, we talk about a few business things, and I asked Phil, do you think it'd be all right to call Mick? And he goes, well, I don't know. And, and when, he, when he said it like that, I, I didn't want to take it any further. I said, okay, well, let him know that I'm thinking about it, you know? Yeah. And, and I left it at that. And, and uh, you know, the uh, last thing I'd want to do is have a phone conversation that's that's cold or indifferent right. or painful or yeah. s something you wish you hadn't made the call. Yeah. So, so I, I just kind of left it uh, left it as it was and and, uh, and hopefully it would change at some point. 
is it sort of there's so many years that have sort of gone under the bridge that you're kind of numb to it at this point, or is does it still kind of bug you that the, the a guy who you created some of the most amazing music with that that you're not in touch, you're not even you know just get together for a writing session one time that would, would be something. I I don't know. I, I mean, I thought after after the Songwriters Hall of Fame Award, we we rehearsed and we talked. It was very friendly then, you know, and and we did dinner and we recalled memories, we were laughing and stuff, but I, but honestly, after that night, nothing. And, and I just assumed he was being gracious because because uh, of the honor of being inducted and and and, uh, and that's all it was. What, as, as far as the, the songwriting part of your life, are you writing anymore? Do you, do, oh yes, yeah? And what, how has that process changed? I mean, I know, I don't want to go on and on about you and, and Mick. I, I know that it was tempestuous? No, no not, not always, but, but um, it was, I mean, do you feel like the, you know, the Graham Jones partnership is one of those, these two guys get together, they come up with magic. It, it, it seemed like it was like that from, from the very beginning. I think the, fir the first writing session we had, uh, um, I, I went over to his apartment, his wife cooked us uh, dinner, and we went to his little music room. He had a uh, small amplifier for his guitar, and a, and a microphone, and a speaker, and, and, and a couple keyboards. And, and, uh, and, and that night, the first time we wrote together, we wrote Long, Long Way From Home. I mean, oh, start our song, cool. finished it. Wow. That night, that finished night. it. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Like, and that for the for the partnership, I'll tell you. <laughs> right. Uh, well, I know he Mick pursued you to be in in the band. I know you had your own band that uh, you were trying to see through until, as I understand it, they said, "Look, we love you, but you should really take that gig." <laughs> yeah, yeah. My band was very gracious about it, and. Uh, 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 you know, if, if I wasn't too, so so bound to uh, black sheep emotionally, uh, uh, I would have pursued it myself. But uh, but I I told Mick, thank you for for the offer, but I'm loyal to the band I'm in, mm -hmm. and and good luck with finding a singer. I told him, and he said, but he says he says uh, I'll call you back in a couple weeks and see if anything's changed. So when I told the guys at Black Sheep that Mick Jones had called me about an audition in this new band that he's forming, and they said, well, what did you say? I said, I told them, no, thank you. They go, what are you, crazy? <laughs> so they, 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 they pushed me to take that audition because they, they, they knew that uh, it didn't look like anything was going to happen for Black Sheep, and uh, they thought this was a great opportunity for me. So uh, I, uh, they're all very good friends to this day. So, that's beautiful. How uh, how has your your writing, your, the the actual mechanics of your writing, changed over the years? I mean, do you and are you one of those people who believes that the songs come through you, or are you one of those guys that yeah, I thought that fucking riff up. <laughs> <laughs> Well, when it comes to riff, I don't think of many of them. Myself. You're more lyric, yes. But 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 you know I I um, you know it's, it's from from uh, years years and years earlier, I've begun to noodle around with keyboards and guitars and stuff where where I had no clue about them uh, uh, when the band started, and and uh, and um, you know I I was the, the main author of of Jukebox Arrow, and, and I. I played that riff on the keyboards and, and, and the guitar. You know, I don't know what it was I played, but I played it. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you remember when, you know, when you said, was keyboards the, where you, it started? Because the synth starts off with that synth. Yeah, it, it was, and it wasn't the, the cool synth thing, thing. It was the do 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 you know. It was like a, like a bass keyboard, you know. And, and, uh, and I, I use just just that note and, and that that bass riff to, to start singing the verse, and, and um, 
even even the the it took one guitar. I was I was whacking those chords out on the keyboard, you know, thinking in my mind that it would be guitar at some point. And uh, uh, my friend, uh, lifelong friend Bruce Turgan, who who was in Black Sheep with me and in in uh, with me on my solo solo albums, co-writing and playing in my bands and stuff for 25, 30 years. He he uh, he helped me with with that song, taking it to the next step. And I, I remember I remember. Um, it was just before we were just finishing up writing songs for the 404 album, and, and I brought, I had a very rough uh, uh, demo of Jukebox Hero. I remember bringing it in with Bruce uh, to to um, to a, re a for a rehearsal, and and uh, I said, Mick, I says I've been, I've been writing writing a, a song that I'd like you to hear. I said Bruce has been helping me to to uh, Translate it and, and, and play the parts better, and and uh, so I played a little a cassette for him, and and uh, he he had this funny look on his face. I, I couldn't tell if I if I should be just embarrassed and turn around and go home, or what. And and, and uh, his his funny look turned into to to a. You know, one eyebrow, one eyebrow up, uh, like the rock. Like, yeah. What is this? Gotta keep rocking, you know. And, and um, he immediately picked up his his guitar and and uh, started to try and figure out the chords. And Mick is one of the best chord translators that I've ever seen or worked with you know he, he he makes his chords in a very different way than most guitar players do and, and w which which totally lends to great sounding songs yeah. and and, uh, and and so the chords on jukebox hero are also a little odd for for a, a normal chord of a guitar player and and when when mick picked his guitar up just casually picked it up and tried to, to play the chords of jukebox hero and he couldn't get it, you know. And, and uh, he, I could see he was starting to get a little irritated, and, and uh, he was going, "Oh, that's nice, but I don't think it's for us." <laughs> <laughs> and I said, "No, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute." I said, "Bruce, show him the, the chords," and and Bruce picked up the guitar and showed him, just basically showed him the chords, and Mick immediately, immediately grabbed the guitar from him and started playing them. And one, once, once he got. The, the the idea of where we were going and, and how how um, uniquely the chords were played uh, then he embraced it and, and uh, um, helped uh, contribute uh, a section in the song which 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 uh, made the song even better yet mm -hmm. which section I, I think it was um, the bridge I've heard, I've heard that the bridge is the hardest thing to write in for a song. Yeah, I think it must have been the bridge. Yeah, I'm not sure which. <laughs> have you considered? Here's a question. Have you considered because jukebox? I mean, I don't know. Are there, do they exist anymore? I, mean, I don't even know. <laughs> have you considered family, maybe? Yeah. You know, I don't know. Spotify hero. <laughs> let, let me interrupt for a second. Okay. Since that song was released, and it's been out for many years now. Indeed. I think jukeboxes have made an amazing comeback. Yeah. 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 But they're uh, they're playing like files, or they're not playing discs, are they? Well, uh, some of them are, but but but, but the new the newer ones are are I suppose they are playing files, but 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 uh, the the idea of of a jukebox that that lights up and has the whole yeah. jukebox look to it, and yeah. you press the button to play the song, you know, no matter what the format is, it's still a jukebox. <laughs> That's, the song speaks to the the kind of fire that you and, and every other musician who hears a song or goes to a show and says, "I gotta do that," <laughs> right? Yeah, I've been there. Yeah. Um, and you, right, you—that's it. You have been there. That's that's the idea. And 
My question though is, especially because of the nature of technology now, the, the, the state that radio is in, the state there's this new thing, Sirius XM, where I've worked for 19 years. Um, is, it's different now. It's not, it, it seemed like a simple thing, like yeah, you go, you, you get that guitar, you learn those chords, just have it slung way down low, and that's it, you're off and running. You know, you're gonna get a song on the radio. What's well, so much more than that now? It takes, it's a song on the radio, number one songs in America these days, 50% of the population doesn't know the song. That's right, that's correct. I, I mean, I, I, I don't subscribe to Billboard magazine anymore, but when I see one, I'll pick it up and I'll, I'll look at the top 100. And if I know five out of 100, I'll be surprised. Yeah. It's just it's a, just a different world out there, you know? Right. And, and that obviously means I'm getting old and out of touch with reality. <laughs> but you know what? I'm okay with that. <laughs> What? I'll keep my reality, you keep yours. <laughs> I had a touch with reality. I thought you were clean and sober. What do you mean? <laughs> um, so the, the idea where I'm headed with this is that it is a new world and that, that, that beautiful sort of romantic notion of I heard the song and I got the guitar isn't the case anymore. So what do you, what does, how does that hit you? Is it, do you think... The audience is losing. Do you think the artists uh, that we're, we're getting now maybe don't have the, the, the substance or the coolness? That's a, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, uh, uh, it's hard to say because I've always thought of songwriting as uh, a really um, a, a creative, Hard fought uh, uh, win when you when you can take uh, a number of ideas and and uh, either they they fall together perfectly and suddenly you've got this great song or you have to knock down and struggle and come away with bruises and scratches and and at the end of two weeks or more you have a good song you know it doesn't always fit together like, like, like a, a four-piece four piece puzzle, you know? It can only go one way, you know? But, but uh, I mean, di different songs, uh, uh, you, you struggle in, in different increments, but, but the, the result is always gratifying, and, and uh, if you're lucky, even more than that. Yeah. You're a man of faith. Yes, I am. Where... So again, do you do does the music that you write, the, the, those kinds of those creative things that you come up with, do they come from God? Do they come from where? Where do they come from? Do you think? Well, I I, uh, I think my imagination comes from God. Yes. Yep. And oh, and yeah. uh, no no matter. No matter how, how much I pat myself on the back, well, that's a pretty good idea. You got there, Lou. You know, uh, I I I know I know where to to uh, give give the credo to. And it's always been that way, even even before I was saved. So that you that you felt that the the things that you were writing were divine. Came from the divine. No, I, 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 I'm, I'm not saying I thought I thought about it then, but I'm. I'm oh, but it, that was the way that it was. You just realized it later. That's right. Yeah. Got, okay, I got it. Um, in terms of uh, of that process, um, I'm always amazed that uh, a band or a writer can come up with anything more than one album. It's such an incredible gift, and, and what an, an incredible amount of luck to be able to pull this off, plus a little divine intervention. Yes. Um, but I think as 
as an artist, um, I'll ask you, as an artist, as you get on, uh, are, are the inspirations the same for what you want to write about? Is the, is the inspiration to write, period, less these days than it was? Well, uh, given the fact that, that uh, I'm not a proficient uh, uh, musician, so to speak, you know, it always helps if you have a partner to write with who can, who can be the mouthpiece for your creativity. And, uh, you know, I, I started, started songs before and, and hit dead ends simply because of my own lack of ability to take them any farther. But, but uh, if I believe in what I wrote to that point, I'll go find somebody to help me with the rest of it. And uh, that, that's usually not a problem. Um, and do you have in mind to, to, to keep recording and keep putting out music? Or as we speak, well, I'll t tell you. Can I tell you a quick story? Take a long story. <laughs> we, we got time. We're on a fucking boat. <laughs> All right. <laughs> See how much time we got. <laughs> well, we don't dock until tomorrow morning. So, <laughs> so uh, I was uh, going through some old tapes in my studio, and uh, I was going through the the sessions of the Red or Not album and the uh, Long Hard Look album, okay. and the Shadow King album, and and the nineties, I believe, early nineties into early nineties for Shadow King. Okay. And, uh, mid and late 80s for the, for the other two albums. And, and other than the, the songs that were on the albums, which was, I think, 10 songs on each of the albums, uh, on those 24-track tapes was at least three or four other songs or song ideas that weren't quite finished. So I, I put the 24 tracks up and, and started listening to these song ideas. And, and some of them just were not redeemable. <laughs> but, 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 to be honest, was like, what was I thinking? <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's right. Oh, fast forward, please. <laughs> and uh, uh, there, there were a couple uh, out, of, out of the four songs that didn't make the album. I, I would say at least two of, Two of the four songs on, on each of the three albums were 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 very good ideas that that were headed into a very good song and and I think it was n not so much uh, um, hit a creative dead end as a timeline. If we wanted to get the album released, we had to pick ten songs out of 14 songs and finish them and put the album on. Now as soon as you do that, you're so caught up with the album that you, you forget the other two or three ideas that were pretty damn good, but you didn't quite get a chance to put them on the album because they weren't done. And years go by. So this is, this, uh, this is in the last two years. I went back and listened to my first solo album, which was, which was done in 1987. And I'm hearing these, at least out of the four yep. ideas that didn't make the album, two of the ideas were pretty damn good. Mm -hmm. So, and then I went to uh, the Ready or Not album, and then the Long Hard Look album, and then the Shadow King album. And, and I've got about seven song ideas. I've got seven songs finished. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna release new music this year. That's big news. Thank you. Very exciting. It is very exciting. It's very, very exciting. And, uh, you know, the songs that, that uh, were, were pretty solid as a song, but maybe uh, there was, in the lead guitar section, there was, there was a big hole there and nobody played, you know? So, so now I'm thinking about who, who could I call to, to come and play on this, you know? So it's, so it's, it's, it's pretty exciting to, to be in that position again. It's great. And, it's, and hear a song take shape. Yeah. Now, half those songs uh, had a had a great first verse, and we were nailing the chorus. But the second verse it was just tape tape hiss. 
<laughs> no, no, no vocals. So, so they just went so far and we didn't take them any farther. So, so, so the last two years I've been, I've been finishing up these songs. Yes. So is, is there any of these, these songs, and I know that these are, you know, with the foreigner era, but are there any of these songs that is so as good as Midnight Blue? Mid Come on, Midnight Blue is one of my top 20 songs of the 80s. I'm sorry. We blasted it on MTV. It was, it, it, it's every, I love everything about that song. You, you know that, that song, I, I have a, a, a page torn out of Billboard magazine in 1987, and it says, it shows Midnight Blue was the most played single of the year over Can't Find What I'm Looking For by U2. Wow. And, and I can't remember, there was two, another couple that were like, oh my God, you're kidding me, you know? So, you know, I've got that one framed in my, my office. Woo! Yeah! Thank you. Yeah! Yeah, man. Uh, so that means you're gonna do sort of the whole cycle again. So, well, I'm going to record and I'm going to yeah. tour. And, I'm gonna... And, and, and since those albums were on Atlantic, I've, I've been talking to Atlantic about, about uh, uh, if they were interested in, in, in uh, helping me see that through with, with a budget and this and that. And, and I think uh, I'm, I'm going to be on Rhino, which is, which is their home for, yeah, it's um, all the same. for, for, for uh, senior artists yeah. just before they get put out the pasture. I, I think it's 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 right. They, they spin a little slower. Yes. <laughs> you you can almost hear the the cows chewing. <laughs> but it's it's exciting, and uh, you know, de depending on when we get, we don't we don't quite know the release date yet, but it'll be before the end of the year. Ha have you been in the studio? Cutting anything, putting yeah. anything down? Well, yeah, the, the, the like the ideas I told you about. But yes. been, I think we've got out of about eight or nine, we've got about six of them done. Wow! And so, right. nice. so, but they don't want to release an album. They want to release five tracks right. in in a, in a like, like a what what do they call that? EP. EP. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, and um, I think it's uh, five tracks, and let's see how it goes. Mm -hmm. And, and if, if it goes well, then later in the year, they'll release the other five, and then, then they'll put it together as a whole album. Yeah, well, I don't mind. If that's the way they want to do it, I'm okay with that. I, I feel there confident enough in the songs. Well, it's, it, it's no longer uh, an album culture. That's right. Um, and EPs, there are, there are people putting out EPs, but what I find happening is artists are putting out a single, and then two weeks later, they'll put out another single. Right. And then two weeks after that, another one. <clears throat> and they're wondering, like, well, why? How come I'm not making any headway with this? Right. I, 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 I don't quite get what the, the thought behind that is, because I, I, I sure like the way it was. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, th there must be a reason for it, and, and I haven't figured it out yet. I'm, I'm too happy to be, be have a home for my songs, you know? And... and um, I'm hoping that that uh, they garner some interest, and there's still an audience for my songs. That's good. okay. So we all have to write to it. Right to Atlantic Records, Craig Coleman. I'm talking to you. <laughs> no, but they they still they still have um, the 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 um, the rock abandon and and the uh, the reckless words and all, all that stuff. It's 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 traditional stuff, but but. Uh, it, it sounds more than traditional because they don't have that kind of music around anymore. No, nope. no, nope. no. Nope. Well, the hope is that whatever it was that we loved about what you were doing back in the day, that yeah, you're going to do that again, but not a rehash. Oh no, there's got to be something more that these years have oh. added to your perspective. You're, you're not going to say, oh, that sounds like something from the four to four album. Uh, I mean, no, nobody said that on my solo albums or Shadow King, so they're 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 uniquely mine. And uh, uh, I know you've had some health issues. You had uh, a benign brain tumor, had a massive surgery. I think I read it was 18 hours or 19 hours or something like that. 
who, who was the size of a large egg in my uh, right frontal lobe. And, and this, this sucker had tentacles that went across my inside of my head, uh, uh, almost took out my optic nerve, and, and wrapped itself around the pituitary on the other side of my, my head, and, and uh, left that uh, functioning at about 30%. Wow. So, so I was first five or six years after my surgery, I was on massive steroids, and, and I didn't, I did not feel like like the person I am. Right. For a long time, uh, I developed uh, sleep apnea. I got, I got in about three or four bad accidents because I didn't know I had it. Mm -hmm. You know, I finally went to a sleep apnea clinic when they told me, oh yeah, you've got sleep apnea. You know, and, and uh, then came to CPAP and all that stuff. And, and it, was, it was just a, it was just, you know, five or six years that, that were totally shrouded in a cloud for me. And, and, and I, I was, I was getting nothing out of living, to be honest with you. Here you are on the other side of that. I mean, far on the other side, not just, okay, I can, you know, I can hold my head up and I can, you know, put words together, but you're out, you're writing, you're touring, you're back in the studio. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now, Woo. What, what did you, well, I'll, I'll share, I've been really personal in my handies this morning. I'll share that uh, in 2014, I had a liver transplant. I almost died. Really? Jeez. And I am here today to tell the story, and I, I carry that experience and what the realizations that I came to, what's important and what's not, yes. I carry that. Do you have a similar experience? Oh, totally. Totally, yes. And, uh, you know, I made sure my will was a little different and totally together. Uh, uh, actually, before surgery, be, because um, oh my God, going into that surgery, they probably said get your affairs in order. I guess, yeah, right? Yeah, you know, Rochester, New York has has great hospitals, and they have a terrific applause for Rochester. A terrific uh, brain surgery uh, unit, and uh, when I when I felt so so weird, I, I was having short and long term memory loss, spotty. And I, I was, um, I, I just, I just didn't, didn't feel like myself at all. I was starting to wonder what was wrong with me, you know. And, and uh, so I had the MRI done, and and uh, they told me that they told me, you know, about the tumor, the size it was, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And then they finished up by saying, we don't think we can operate on this. Oh. And, and uh, so, so the doctor there says, says, but I have a doctor in New York who, who's, who's uh, been doing this for a, quite a few number of years, and, and uh, I, I think he would be the guy to, to go to, maybe be more, a little more qualified and experienced. Thank God, he found this one doctor. So, so I went to New York and had MRI, I brought my MRIs, I had new MRIs done for him. And he called me in, he called me into his office. He said, Lou, he says, um, I don't know how to put this to you, but you need to go home and put your affairs in order. Just like that. So that flight home was, was very strange. And, but 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 the, the the miracle side of this was it wasn't even three or four days later that I was watching 2020. You know you know that TV program. Yeah, yeah. And, and one of the segments was a, uh, a segment about a doctor Richard Black at Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston. Boston. And he's he was the purveyor of using laser surgery on inoperable brain tumors. And that's me, inoperable. And and um, it, it showed how he, he was talking about me. Showed how how, uh, how 
precise, obviously how precise the laser was, and it could get into places that a normal surgery couldn't hope to get into, you know. And and uh, I, 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 my eyes were like saucers. And at the end of the segment, he gave his office number. I was on the phone with his secretary at 7 a.m. the next morning. And, and she told me, you know, I, I told her my situation, and she said, well, Lou, I want to tell you, we've had a cancellation and we have an opening for surgery this Thursday. Oh, shit. How great is that? Talk about divine intervention. Oh, my yes. Oh, my she says, bring all your MRIs. We're going to do some more MRIs and, and, and you'll be in surgery on Thursday. So I went there. I met, I met the doctor. He was a great, great man. And, and uh, at 5 a.m., they were wheeling me into surgery. And um, I woke up. When I woke up, you know, my, I was very foggy and, and uh, couldn't put two thoughts together. And, and uh, Dr. Black came in to see me and told me that the surgery went great and, and mentioned, mentioned that the surgery took 19 hours. And when he was talking to me, it was already four days later in the surgery. And, and but he, he told me, he says, he says, the worst is it over. He says, uh, he says, your, your recovery is going to be long and arduous. And it was. I didn't start feeling my, like myself for about five or six years later. I was struggling with all sorts of things as, as a result of my brain healing. I think you're going to get those years back on the other end. Well, let's, let's hope so. So I don't want to belabor this, but 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 it, it's a freaking miracle. Yeah. You know, and I know it for what it is. Um, so I actually I have two more questions before I want to turn it over to you guys. I know you probably have some questions for Lou. One, and this I just like as I'm looking at you now, this hit me. I have the same kind of hair as you did in the '80s. What the hell is going on here? Did you perm your hair or something? I, I don't perm anything. Did, well, what? I didn't either. Did you ever hear that song? The thrill is gone, baby. Yeah. Uh, BB King. The remake is the curl is gone, baby. <laughs> it's it's still wavy, but but I used to have those <laughs> those tight or semi tight curls. Yeah, man. It it just I, it must be my surgery. <laughs> okay. All I can say. I did. I, just, I, think, I thought maybe there's a treatment that, that I should be getting. My doctor saved my life, but he took the damn curl out of my hair. Uh, all right, so final question before we return it over to you guys. Um, I, I was talking with Lou backstage, and I mentioned a show that I did for Sirius XM briefly uh, called My Life, The Soundtrack. And the concept is that uh, I'm going to ask Lou about a song, any song, not necessarily one that he has written, um, hopefully maybe something from someone who he loves, um, respects, but a song that has a personal connection to a moment in his life. Not a Desert Island this, not this is my favorite rocks, no. A song that is personal to you. Do you have something like that? I do. Yeah, I mean, uh, any, anybody who knows me knows I'm, I'm a devout Beatles fan. Uh, yeah. I, uh, I remember hearing uh, the Beatles when, when uh, the DJs in, in the States first, first got their, their uh, 45s. And I was listening to all sorts of, of Beatles songs even before their first album came out. And I, I, I mean, I, I was a fanatic Beatles fan for as long as they existed. But even before that, there was a song that, that really struck me hard. And it, it's, it's, Louie, Louie, oh, Louie, oh, yeah, 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 Louie, Louie. I couldn't get over that song. It was just, it was just the beat, the, 
the, the sloppy sloppiness yeah. of the play, the whole the, the whole, Kingsman, the Kingsman. That's right, the whole nine yards of it. They, their their second big hit was an instrumental. That's how good they were. <laughs> <laughs> But, but, but what? But is there a moment tied to that? There, there is. A, I think. I think it was. It was a puberty thing. <laughs> but that that song takes you back to that era it, it in your life. Because, because uh, um, the the words in the verse are, at tonight at ten I'll lay her again. <laughs> well, we think that's what the words are. We don't really know, do we? <laughs> well, you know, when I was a kid who took a forty-five record. And, and down sped it to 33. Well, although it was a night in turn, I, I still got the lyrics. You know. All right, and it's fil filthy lyrics all the way through. You know. I, I couldn't believe that, that they, they got that on the radio. You know. I have a lot of respect for them. We gotta go now. Let's go. <laughs> that loud and clear. Yes, that was good. Um, well, thank you for that. I, I want to turn it over. We have a few minutes left here, and I'm, I, I know people are going to want to ask you some questions, so we'll take a few here. Anybody? Uh, all right, you're up first. You're the first person. Right. So come on down. Uh, you mentioned the shadow. Come on over here. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how much cable I have. <laughs> Uh, you mentioned the Shadow King album, which I absolutely love. Thank you. I know the climate of music was kind of changing around the time. Were there ever plans to do a second album with uh, Vivian? Well, you know, uh, when I uh, uh, brought the idea of Shadow King and the personnel to, to Atlantic Records, they, they were gung-ho. You know, we've got a nice budget and, and uh, promised their full support. And uh, uh, we went into the studio with Keith, Keith Olsen and recorded a, an awesome album, I think. And, and it was it was hard rock. It was heavy, but the songs were were memorable and, and uh, uh, easily could have could have made it into the top 25, top 30 in the single department. Um, my 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 take on things. I I had a lot of friends. I worked in the Atlantic Records promotion department and a few other departments that 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 had been friends of mine since Foreigner started, you know. And uh, so so when the Shadow King album was released, I didn't see or hear any promotion on it in, in, in the in the uh, trade papers, uh, on the radio. I, I I never heard the I never heard the first single or any of the songs played on the radio not once, and and, I, and uh, in the, in the record stores and in the places where you would find the album, it wasn't there. Oh. And and I heard from 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 my close friends, who who worked in other departments of Atlantic Records. That my good friend Mick, you know my friend Mick, mm -hmm. uh, uh, told. The president of Atlantic, I'm not quite sure who it was at the time, but that Mohammed had passed by then, I believe. Uh, that, he's the chairman of the board, by the way. I, I don't remember who the, the president of Atlantic was, but he told the president of Atlantic, if 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 this album is a hit, uh, um, we won't have, we'll never be able to get Lou back, and and that'll be the end of Foreigner. Who has has made so much money for you? Oh, boy. So so you've got to make sure that doesn't happen. That that's that's what the, one of my friends told me, and my other friends backed up that story to the letter. That that the album was was just ignored by Atlantic Records and not promoted at all. I hate this business. <laughs> and, and so, because of that, we played one show as a band, and and it was in in London at the um, the Rainbow Rainbow Room, and it was packed to the rafters, and, and we brought down the house, and and it was just after that that we learned that we we were being sabotaged by our own record company, Holy and shit. and it wasn't two weeks after that that Vivian Campbell had had the offer to go with. Def Leppard, and that was the end of the band. Oh my God! 
sucky business. Who else? I had no idea. Sweatshirt back there. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Sweatshirt, that's you, bud. <laughs> Hey, don't we have an extension for this cord? <laughs> hey, how can our lead singer go in the audience when he can't get it off the stage? You know? If I can say this well, you know, I've had five shots of Jack. <laughs> no, we've seen Foreigner, I don't want to be disrespectful, we've seen Foreigner in uh, Florida. <laughs> But then we saw you last night. You're fucking porn. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah! Woo! Thank you for that. Don't sit down, I don't want you to get hurt. Oh my god, yeah. Really? You, know, you know, that's... that's uh, a great a great moment here i think to ask you how you feel about you it's you carry on the foreigner legacy now it's up to you but you, you know what when um mick put this band together it was a few years before i started playing again with the band and and uh it was it was the lou graham band you know it was lou graham and, and uh but in the advertisements uh, I thought it would be okay to at least say original vocalist of Foreigner. Yeah. yeah. It's true. It's true. <laughs> so we we were, um, I can't remember what, what what city we were in. We were at a, at a, at a county fair out, out in the Midwest. And this, this place had about 55,000 people there. And we were pulling in to the to the arena and we got pulled over by the police and we were told we, we had we were given a cease and desist letter saying that mixed attorneys forbid you to use the word foreigner in your advertising holy shit wow. oh, man. that's the first time hearing that story Well, nonetheless, <laughs> I mean, what, what in God's name was I doing? Was I telling a fib? <laughs> I've been been with the band over 20 years, and I'm oh just my stating God. the fact that I'm the original vocalist from the band. Yes, band. yes. Question? Oh, it's a pleasure to see you. Uh, Thank as you. Someone who has a loved one who survived a terrible diagnosis and ultimate surgery. Um, I'm not asking you for an autograph as much as I would love one, or a photo as much as I would love one. What, I'm am, what I am asking you is to reach out to Nick, to close the circle, oh. to communicate with him. Pick up the phone, take a flight. You don't think that'll happen? Close the circle and see him. I think that would be kinda, perfect. Yeah, questionable. Something about, uh, I'm not saying I'm going to do that, but you know what? I'm going to put some deep thought in that. Yeah! I, I don't feel good about, you know, him, him being, uh, I believe, close to death, leaving it this way. I don't think that's right either. But, but I mean, I've, I've made overtures through his manager to talk to him on the phone or fly to New York and see him. And, and, and he told me, I don't think you should do that. Wow. Be, because he's that ill? No, because Nick wouldn't want to see you. Nick wouldn't want to see you. See, that's, that is the question. And this is sort of, we've been dancing around it in a way. Like as, as, the years, as the years go on, and especially when you come through near-death experiences, you, you realize what's important and what you can do away with what's well, chaff. He's come through his own. That's what I'm saying. Here to Both of you. Yes. Should, you know, as this gentleman said, to, to close the circle, it's 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 bullshit. It's just it's bullshit. bullshit. It's bullshit. You know, it's it's too important. 
to, to let someone pass without straightening it out. I mean, why is this manager speaking for him about whether I can hold him or stand? Exactly. He manages his music career in great. Does he, does, he, does he speak for me in real life too? Exactly. It, it sounds to me, it, it sounds to me like you're more hurt than you want to let on about the way that the relationship is right now. You know, Mick and I uh, had some really serious ups and downs over our career. You know, I, I, I'm, I, I really have some things that, that, that I wish could be brought out in the open with him. But I realize at this point of our lives, it's not worth it. You know, and uh, I would just like to, you know, leave, leave the slate uh, uh, clean. And, and at least if if we're not friends, that we we can uh, make peace. Make peace. Yes, that's the most important thing. Woo! Woo! Right, we're running a little long here. One more question. Yeah. All right. Up. I got it. I got it. All right. Well, I'm all worked. I'm all worked up. So, Lou. All right. Real quick. When I was 13, I saw you guys play in Columbus, Ohio, Double Vision Tour, Ambrosia Open. You guys killed it. Let me ask you this: We've lost. Who who recently passed? I I had my question ready, but now I went blank. Um, you know, played saxophone. Come on, help me, Lou. Oh, with Judy Walker? No, no, no. In the original band. Oh, in our band, yeah. Ian McDonald. Ian McDonald. He recently passed. Yes, he did. Do you have any contact information with all the other rest of the members? I mean, you could essentially bring them back to some degree. I mean, what is your what is your relationship with the other band members? The original band. It's fine. Is that? Is that something that anyone would be interested in? I, I, don't, I don't think I'd want to bring the original band back without without a band member and the, the creative force be, behind the band. I, I don't think that's respectful. But but uh, you know, I do keep in touch with the other guys, and we're all friends. You know. That's cool. All right. All right. Well done. Uh,